Attorney General for India. Is he part of the Union Executive? He is part of the Union Executive. And the article is a constitutional body. It is a constitutional body. Why? It is mentioned in the article 76 of the Constitution. Okay. And regarding Attorney General, he is the first and the topmost law officer. He is the topmost law officer of the Union Government. Of the Union Government. Now regarding his appointment, he is appointed by the President on the recommendation of, on the advice of the Prime Minister. Okay. And what, see, his qualification is very important. Okay. The qualification to become Attorney General is the same as the qualification for the Supreme Court Judge. What is the qualification to become a Supreme Court Judge? It is the same for Attorney General. So, if a person who is qualified to become a Supreme Court Judge can become, can become Attorney General for India if he is ad, uh, appointed by the President on the advice of Prime Minister. So, and what is the condition to become what is the condition to become the judge of the Supreme Court? One, he has to be a citizen of India. No minimum age is mentioned here. Remember, President and Vice President, minimum age is there. What is the minimum age? 35. So, no minimum age is prescribed for Supreme Court judges uh, since and High Court judges as well as for High Attorney General also. Same qualification. So, he has to be a citizen of India and he have to fulfill any of these three, from the three conditions, any one he have to fulfill. Either he has to be a judge of some high court for five years or he have to be, a, this is the qualification of to become a Supreme Court judge. Same is for Attorney General. To become a Supreme Court judge, what are the qualifications? One, citizen of India. Two, he have to be a high court judge for five years or High Court Advocate for 10 year or an eminent jurist in the opinion of the President. Recently you might have heard that na, Nariman. Nariman became the Supreme Court Judge. On what ground he became? He got the title of, since the President has given him the title of eminent jurist. On Based on that only he was appointed as Supreme Court Judge. Okay. So, most of the cases but mostly it is the High Court Judges, mainly the Chief Justice of High Court is after his five, their five year tenure as High Court Judges will be appointed as Supreme Court Judge. Okay. So, any of these qualifications, any one of these, if it is fulfilled and if he is a citizen, that is the qualification for Supreme Court Judge and that is the same for Attorney General also. Now, regarding his term of office, it is not fixed. He can be removed. He can be removed any time. Normally, when a, a council of minister completes the tenure or resigns, attorney general also resigns. This is normally happens. Okay, so it is not fixed by the constitution. Many constitutional bodies, their tenure is fixed. Mostly, it is five years. But in the attorney general case, tenure is not fixed by the constitution. And regarding its removal, it is not mentioned in the constitution. Regarding the attorney, how the attorney general have to be removed, it is not mentioned in the constitution. Okay, and he hold office during the pleasure of the president. What does it mean? He can be removed any time. What is this pleasure of the president means? Advice of the prime minister. It is actually the prime minister advise the president, and president takes the decision. Okay, but constitution word are be very careful. Okay, this is what mentioned in the article seventy six. He hold office during the pleasure of the president and he will receive such remuneration as the president may determine and what another important point to note down is that he is not a whole time counsel for the government nor a government servant attorney general is not a government servant he is not a full time advocate for the union government he even can practice he can also go for private practice while being attorney general he can go for private practice okay he can take up the cases independently so that's the meaning of he is not a whole time counsel he is not a government servant okay and normally he is assisted by uh, attorney general is assisted by solicitor general and additional solicitor general understand that 
Attorney General is a constitutional body. Solicitor General, additional Solicitor General is nowhere mentioned in the Constitution. So they are not, they are not constitutional body. So you will read about them. So whenever a news comes regarding a case regarding the president, uh, sorry, the union government, we will see them, Attorney General or Solicitor General, uh, taking the case for the government. Now, this is very, 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 very important. The uh, functions and the relationship of Attorney General with the Parliament. Okay, so he gave what is his function? He gave legal advice to the central government. He gave legal advice, and he performed such duties of legal character, legal character of the as upon him by the Constitution or any other law. So basically, his functions are related with legal advice or related with law. Okay, and I already discussed he is not a full time member for the council for the government he is not debarred from private practice he can go for private practice and this is very 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 important okay he has the right of audience in all courts in the territory of india this is very 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 important they can ask you who has the right of audience in all courts in the territory of india it is the attorney general for india and he is assisted by a told you, solicitor general and additional solicitor general. Now, right here also you write important attorney general and parliament. You write important here. You PC have asked a question. The relationship between attorney general and parliament. So, attorney general, I told you, even though he is a union, he is a part of union executive, he is not a member of cabinet. Okay. He is not a member of the cabinet. He is not a member of council of minister. Okay, but he is a part of union executive. Union executive consists of president, vice president, council of ministers and attorney general. Okay. Now, now regarding the parliament, regarding the parliament, attorney general have the right to speak in the parliament. Attorney general, if it is required, he can speak in the parliament. He can take part in the proceedings of the both the houses of the parliament or their joint sitting. So, in relation to parliament, attorney general is not only a law officer, he can speak in the parliament, he can take part in the proceedings of the parliament, both the houses of the parliament as well as in the joint sitting and also he can be a member, he can be in any committee of the parliament, he can be in any committee, parliament appoints many committee, he can be in any committee of the parliament. So, he can speak in the parliament, he can take proceedings, it means he can participate in the proceedings of the parliament and he can be a member in the committee of the parliament. But, he since he is not a member of parliament, he can't vote in the parliament, except right to vote in the parliament, except he cannot vote in the parliament, but other things, he can speak, he can take part in the proceedings, and he can become a member of committee in the parliament, of any parliamentary committee, but he cannot write, he do not have the right to vote. And this is very, another important point, okay, regarding the privileges. See, his qualification is of the judge of the Supreme Court, but his privileges is, privileges is, is the, what an MP, member of parliament, get. He get all the privileges of a member of parliament, do not get confused. Attorney General has the privileges of a member of parliament, but his qualification is of a judge of Supreme Court. And his removal is not mentioned in the constitution. He can be removed at the pleasure of the president. Okay. No tenure, no fixed tenure is for him. Okay. So, these are the basic things to be kept in mind. And UPSC have asked two questions from Attorney General. So, that way this topic is very important. In the year 2013, what is the question they asked? Attorney General can take part in the proceedings of the Lok Sabha. Is it correct? Yes, he can take part in the proceedings of the Lok Sabha. B can be eliminated. He can be a member of the committee of the Lok Sabha. Yes. The two is also correct. So, you can eliminate one only because two is not there. You can eliminate 
what your answer. So, by reading the two statement using the elimination method, they got it, okay. So, what is the answer? He can speak also in the Lok Sabha, but he cannot vote in the Lok Sabha. Answer is C, okay. So, that is please note down. And last question regarding Attorney General, he is appointed by the President. Yes, that is the correct statement. He is appointed by the he is appointed by the president. So he is appointed by the president. C is eliminated. D is eliminated. He must have the same qualification as are required for a judge of the Supreme Court. We got the answer. Answer is okay. But read it, okay. He must be a member of either house of the parliament. No. He can be removed by nonsense. Answer is 1 and 2, okay.